Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we'll begin our study of the 12th class mathematics course and we'll begin with the topic of relations. So before this, a concept which you've already learned is the concept of sets which we'll be using in this chapter. So let's say you have a set A which has the elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. This is also often written as A, sorry. A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Say you also have another set B. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you'll write B is the set of the natural numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right, so this is the set A, this is the set B. Now the notation we'll be using in this chapter is small a will be an element in the set A, in the set capital A. Similarly, small b will be an element in the set B. So A can either be 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5 and B can either be 3, 4, 5, 6 or 7. Now we know what A into B is that is the space A cross B which will have pairings of these. So A cross B the set can be uh, it can be 1 and 3 it can be 1 and 4, 1 and 5, 1 and 6, 1 and 7, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, 2 and 5 and, and so on. Right. So you take every number of A, you pair it with every number of B, the set you'll get is called A cross B. So there's going to be many terms in this. In fact, there's going to be 5 into 5, there's going to be 25 terms. Right. This goes with 5, this goes with 5 and so on. Now suppose we wanted a subset of this set A cross B in which the elements follow a particular relation that's our topic for this that's our topic for this video relations so relations generally are between elements of a set and the set of the relations forms a subset so let's say you wanted elements in a cross b but such that a plus b equals 5 right that is a condition which you need to follow so 1 comma 3 will not be a member of this set, right? It is a member of A cross B, but a set uh, is such that A plus B is equal to 5 is a subset of A cross B. And what will be the terms in this set? First, it will be 1 comma 4, then it will be 2 comma 3, then it would be 3 comma 2, but you don't have 2 here, so that's it. There will be no more, right? So these are the only two terms. So this is a smaller set. So we sometimes refer to this set as the set R, where R is the relation A plus B is equal to 5. I'll put it in proper mathematical terminology in a minute, but this is the ultimate uh, concept which we're trying to learn. You take an element from the set A, you take an element from the set B, and if you have a relation between them, then the set of the elements A and B such that they obey this relation is generally a subset of the set A into B, right? Which is taking one element A, pairing it with any element of B, taking the second element of A and so on, right? So A cross B is basically uh, the pairings of the elements in A with the elements in B. And R is a subset of this. You can see A cross B had 25 elements. But R has only two elements. Right. So let's put this in a little bit more formal form. Capital A is the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Capital B is the set of numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we would like the set R to have 
वन कॉमा फोर एंड टू कॉमा थ्री बेसिकली द रिलेशन शुड बी दैट ए प्लस बी इज फाइव विच इज ओनली वैलिड फॉर दीज टू पेयर ऑफ एंट्रीज सो द वे ऑफ राइटिंग दिस डाउन इज जनरली आर इज इक्वल टू ए कॉमा बी belonging to a cross b this part of the whole there's a big thing inside the curly brackets this part just denotes that a comma b belongs to the product of a and b so that means a is a member of a and b is a member of b and a comma b is an ordering right what is a cross b remember that is the 25 elements 1 with 3 1 with 4 1 with 5 and 2 with 3 and so on right so S is a cross b, which is a member of capital A cross capital B. This restricts a to the values one, two, three, four, or five. A can't be twenty-six, for example, because twenty-six is not the member of the set capital A. And here you have the relation, whatever the relation is. In this case, the relation is a plus b equals five. Right. So this is ultimately it. This is the terminology. This is how you represent relations. Right, so R is equal to a cross b belonging to a cross b, small a cross b belonging to capital A cross b, where a is this set and b is this set. So you take the product of these two, whatever set you get, which will have twenty-five ordered pairs. R is a subset of those twenty-five ordered pairs, such that a plus b is five. So this statement is equivalent to saying R is equal to one comma four and Two comma three. So this is the formal terminology, and if A and B is a subset of R, that means either one comma four or two comma three in this case, then we say that A is related to B under the relation A plus B is equal to five. we often write it as a r b where r is just the symbol for the relation which in this case might be a plus b is equal to 5 now if you have a relation in a that is basically a way of saying that it goes from a to a so a relation in a this is just terminology just means that it's a subset of a cross a so there's really no need to have these two as separate sets i mean they will be different here the elements will be different but you could have both sets having numbers between 1 and 5 so the, in that case you would have it going from the set to the same set and members within this subset which will be members of this relation right now let's look at a few more terminologies as it relates to relations uh the first definition is a relation r in a set a again this is just language relation r in a set a means it goes from a to a that means it is a member of a cross a otherwise we would say a relation going from set a to set b so a relation r in set a is called an empty relation empty relation is just a type of a relation if no element of a is related to any element of a in the element of a so for example if a is the set of numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and you let's say had r is equal to and now we write this as a comma b belonging to a cross a because now a and b both are members of the set a because now we're not going from one set to another set we are just going from one set into the same set such that and let's say the relation was a plus b is equal to 20 
then if this was going from 1 to 19 then you could add up 1 and 19 and get 20 so 1 comma 19 might be a member but this only goes from 1 to 5 you cannot add any two elements of this set to get the number 20 so r is basically the empty relation it doesn't have anything and the set r is the empty set and the empty set is often represented by phi so if a plus b is 20 then you will not have any members in the set r which is represented by phi the symbol for the empty set and obviously phi does belong to a cross a right the empty set is a subset to every set now similarly there's another definition so you just i'll just rub this with the relevant portion from this part a relation R is called an empty relation if no element of A is related to any element of A. It is also called a universal relation if every element of A is related to every other element of A. If every element of A is related to every other element of A right so for example let's say A was 1 2 3 4 and 5 and the relation was uh, A comma B such that uh, A plus B let's say greater than equal to 0 so the sum, sum of two numbers must be greater than equal to 0 so obviously if you take the first five natural numbers the sum of any two will be greater than zero so r is now in this case the universal relation and it is basically the set a cross a now which is also the subset of a cross a so r is always the subset of a cross a but now it is the whole set because now r itself will have 25 elements 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 1 comma 5 2 comma 1 2 comma 2 and so on Right. So, this would be a universal relation. And also, there's a third definition. Empty and universal relations together they are together called trivial relations. So every empty relation is a trivial re relation and every universal relation is also a trivial relation. Let's look at a few more definitions of types of relations. So a relation R is called a reflexive relation. Which is again a type of relation. So some relations will be reflexive but not all if a comma a belongs to r for each a belonging to capital a i'll just uh, clarify the notation now a comma a belongs to r means it is the it is a subset of it is sorry it is an element of the set r this inverted a just means for each so for each a belonging to capital a so for example let's just take again our standard case uh, sorry. 1 2 3 4 5 if we have the relation r which is a comma b from a cross a by the way sometimes this part belonging to a cross a is omitted when it's obvious and sometimes even this whole part is omitted when it is obvious so you just write the relation here but this first part is just meant to tell you that a and b both are members of the set a because you need to know that otherwise you don't know what elements a or b can be so let's say it's such that uh, i don't want to take a universal relation so a plus b greater than zero won't do so let's say a minus b is equal to 0 right this is the relation so what are the elements in this set it's 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 4 comma 4 and 
5.5. So for every small a belonging to this set, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, a comma a belongs to the relation. Now this is a relation in which only a comma a type elements are there. But if we had a relation in which let's say these five elements were there, but also 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 3 comma 5. Even then, this would be a reflective, reflexive relation. It doesn't say that the only elements will be of this form, but you take an element of A and it is always related to itself. As long as a single element of A is always related to itself, in that case, the relation is called a reflexive relation. So this is a relation in which only these were elements of the set. But if we had some other relation R, in which this was the set including these three elements that would be a reflexive relation as well if we had a relation in which these four and three these seven members these seven elements were members of the relation then it would not be a reflexive relation because a comma a is not a member of r if a is five because five comma five is not a member <coughs> right so if a comma a is a member of r for every a then it is called a reflexive relation the next definition is a symmetric relation and a symmetric relation is a relation in which if a1 comma a2 belongs to R that implies a2 comma a1 is also a member of R for all a1 and a2 being members of A. So if a1 comma a2 is a member then a2 comma a1 is a member as well. So if we had 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and let's say we had the relation R a comma b belonging to a cross a such that uh, a, sorry, a plus b is equal to 6. Then what will be the elements of this relation? It will be 1 comma 5, 5 comma 1, uh, 2 comma 4, 4 comma 2 and 3 comma 3. That's it, right? Now we can see that if 1 comma 5 is a member, then 5 comma 1 is also a member. If 2 comma 4 is a member, then 4 comma 2 is also a member. So therefore, this is a symmetric relation. If a1 comma a2 is a member, then a2 comma a1 should also be a member, right? If R was a relation such that 2 comma 4 was not a member, but 4 comma 2 was a member, then this relation would not be true for all a1 and a2 that are member of A, right? Now obviously 2 comma 5 does not need to be a member so it does not mean every pair is a member it means that if 2 comma 5 is a member then 5 comma 2 should be a member as well. So that is a symmetric relation. Let's move on to the third type of relation that is a transitive relation. And a transitive relation is one in which if a1 comma a2 is a member of R and a2 comma a3 is a member of R then and I think you can look at the words in the previous examples and guess then a1 comma a3 should also be a member of R. Right. So you can say that if A1 is related to A2 and A2 is related to A3, then A1 has to be related to A3 as well. Right, so if A is again a standard set, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. By the way, I hope you're not thinking in a limited capacity because I'm only using this set. This could be a set of complex numbers, this could be a set of functions, a set of variables, a set of integers, fractions, it could be anything, right? We are just choosing the simplest case to show you conceptually what these properties are. So if R is equal to A comma B belonging to A cross A such that uh, say A is greater than B. Right. 
So what would be the elements in this set now? A has to be greater than B. Right, so if we take 1, then we don't have anything to go with 1. If we take 2, then we could have 1 to go with it. If we take 3, we could have 1 and 2. Then with 4, we could have 1, 2, and 3. And we could have 5, comma 1, 5, comma 2, 5, 3, and 5, 4. So this is a set. Now we can see that if a1, comma a2 belongs to R, say 5, comma 2 belongs to R, and a2, comma a3 belongs to R, that means 2, comma 1 belongs to R, then 5, comma 1 also belongs to R. Or in other ways, you can say this is if a1 is greater than a2, only then will this be a member of R. If a1 is greater than a2 and a2 is greater than a3, then obviously a1 has to be greater than a3. Right. So this is a relation which has a transitive property. So I'll just write these three again. We are reflexive and symmetric as well. Reflective just meant that A comma A is a member of R for all A belonging to capital A. Symmetric said if A1 comma say, If a1, comma a2 is a member of R, that means a2, comma a1 is a member of R for all a1 and a2 being members of A. And transitive says, so we don't really need this if here. a1, comma a2 belonging to R implies a2, comma a1. a1, comma a2 belonging to R and A2 comma A3 belonging to R implies A1 comma A3 belongs to R for all A1, A2 and A3 in capital A. So these are the three relations and these relations are important. They have, uh, 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 sorry, these are the three properties. And the relations having each of these properties or more than one have different uh, characteristics. So these properties are important. Now, there's one final property which is sort of like the superset of all these properties. And that is an equivalence relation. So an equivalence relation is simply a relation that is R such that R is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Right. So if a relation is reflexive, if that relation is symmetric and that relation is transitive as well, then that relation is called an equivalence relation. Right. And this is the type of relation that has the most pleasant properties. It will have all these properties of transition and it is the simplest and the simplest and the best possible type of relation. That's the way you can remember it. It has nice properties. Right. So an equivalence relation is a relation which is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. Now, let's look at a few examples of each of these types. And now we'll move on to new cases, not just A is the member of natural number, A is the set of natural numbers from 1 to 5. We'll look at many different types of examples. Uh, so let's start with a simple example. Say you have the relation R. Now, this is the terminology here might get a little confusing because I'll often write a relation R in R. Now these two R are different. This is the symbol for the relation R. This is the set of real numbers. This is the R of the form of uh, R is the set of real numbers, Z is the set of integers, N is the set of natural numbers and so on. So R in R means a relation, like we said a set, R, a relation R in A. So A was the set, right? So now we say a relation R, I, mean, I should just write relation here. Relation R in set R. 
right so i'll just write this in the beginning to make it clear so a relation r in the set r means the set a which initially was our natural numbers 1 to 5 is just the set of all real numbers right so if we have r now if we have r in r then r will be obviously a comma b where both a and b belong to r cross r right such that uh, let's say a is less than equal to b right now is this relation reflexive we'll try reflexive symmetric and transitive right so is this relation reflexive if a is less than equal to b does that automatically imply that a is less than equal to a yes a is less than equal to a for every a because there's an equality sign here as well so it is reflexive right if a is less than equal to b does that mean b is less than equal to a obviously not because a could be less than b which means b would be greater than a so it is not symmetric and is it transitive well if a is less than equal to b and b is less than equal to c that does automatically imply that a is less than equal to c as well right so obviously it is transitive so this relation is reflexive and transitive but not symmetric now look, let's look at a few other relations and now we'll move away from relations involving sets of numbers and move on to a little bit more abstract conceptuals. And we'll just check whether they're reflexive, symmetric and transitive for every case. So now let's say you have T1 be the set of all triangles In a plane so you have the XY plane and T1 sorry let, let's just take it to be T yeah so T is the set of all triangles in a plane the relation R is a comma B both belonging to T comma T now notice here what a and B are a and B are not numbers in this case they are triangles so if this is one triangle let's say triangle alpha this is another triangle let's say triangle beta this is another triangle let's say gamma then a comma b could be for example a pair of these two triangles or a pair of these two triangles so now we've moved away from sets being uh, the elements of sets being numbers to the elements of sets being triangles which is as abstract as you can get right so such that let's say a comma b between t and t such that a is congruent to b then is a reflexive so a should be congruent to b is a congruent to a yes every triangle is indeed congruent to itself right is it symmetric if a is congruent to b does that automatically mean that b is congruent to a yes it does because both the triangles are congruent so it is symmetric and if a is congruent to b and b is congruent to c then obviously a and c will be congruent as well so obviously it is transitive as well which means this is an equivalence relation so the set of all triangles in a plane such that uh, they are congruent to each other is an equivalence relation because it's reflexive symmetric and transitive let's look at another e example sorry Uh, let's take L to be the set of all lines in a plane and say the relation R is defined as now these elements need not be A comma B in fact often they'll be represented as L1 comma L2 if the set is L right so that's just terminology belonging to L comma L such that L1 is uh, perpendicular to L2 right so is it reflexive 
if l is l1 perpendicular to l1 no no line is perpendicular to itself right so it is definitely not reflexive if you have let's say these three lines l1 l2 and l3 then obviously l1 is not perpendicular to l1 is it symmetric if l1 is perpendicular to l2 does that also mean that l2 is perpendicular to l1 yes it does so this relation is symmetric now if l1 is perpendicular to l2 and l2 is perpendicular to l3 does that mean l1 is perpendicular to l3 no it means l1 is parallel to l3 right so it is not transitive as well so this is a relation which is symmetric but not reflexive or transitive let's look at one final relation let's say the relation r which is a set of numbers a comma b both belonging to z comma z now z is the set of integers right so r is defined in the set z so we would write it as a relation r in a set z right such that a minus b is a multiple of 2 and for the sake of this set we'll assume for example that minus 8 is also a multiple of 2 right it uh, it's not a natural number but it is a multiple of 2 in that it is 2 multiplied by minus 4 right so it is 2 multiplied by another integer whereas minus 7 would be 2 multiplied by something which is not an integer which is minus 3 and a half right so a and a minus b should be a multiple of 2 let's look at our three properties is a minus a always a multiple of 2 yes a minus a is 0 0 is a multiple of 2 we could also say this is even right or a minus b is even assuming of course that we choose minus 8 to be defined to be even as well so it is reflexive what about symmetric if a minus b is a multiple of 2 does that mean b minus a is a multiple of 2 yes it does so it is symmetric and if a minus b is a multiple of 2 and if b minus c is a multiple of 2 then obviously their sum a minus c will also be a multiple of 2 so it is transitive hence it is an equivalence relation we we'll look at a few more properties of relations in the next video and we'll begin with our studying of this particular relation itself because it has some nice properties. Thank you.